Coming off of two straight losses, the Louisville Cardinals will look to end the season on a high note as they take on the Caleb Williams-less USC Trojans in the Holiday Bowl on December 27th. We will begin to preview that matchup and more on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Well, it's been a sort of a tough end to the football season, sort of 2016-esque. And Louisville will now look to stop the losing streak with a Holiday Bowl matchup against the USC Trojans. Lincoln Riley's team will be without Caleb Williams. We will briefly discuss that matchup. We'll talk about who should play At quarterback for the Cardinals, there's been a discussion amongst the fans. And then to conclude the show, we'll talk about Jeff Walls and the women's basketball team defeating the Kentucky Wildcats for the seventh consecutive time. So a lot of good stuff to talk about on today's episode of the show. Um, As I mentioned, Louisville sort of having a 2016-esque into the season in which uh, they started the year 9-1, ended up losing the remaining three games of the season, including the bowl game against LSU in Lamar Jackson's Heisman season and then this year starting out 10 and 2 and then losing or sorry 10 and 1 and then losing to Kentucky in the Governor's Cup in the regular season finale and then losing to Florida State in the ACC championship but the team now looks to snap that losing streak and muster up as much momentum as they can heading into the offseason, ending the season on a high note. Now, there's a handful of fans that say, well, it's the Holiday Bowl. We don't care at all. Um, For me, I get it. I understand the Holiday Bowl. It's not as glamorous as the Orange Bowl. But for me, personally, if you're not a Blue Blood program that essentially – If you're not making the playoffs, it's a disappointment. If you're not one of those programs, the Bulls still mean at least something. Now, granted, in the the grand scheme of things, not much because you have players already entering the portal. You have coaching changes. Your rosters are in a weird spot to where you don't have uh, all the players that you did over over the season, Um, you know, coaches try to play younger players to see what they have for the future, etc., But every single season in which Louisville has had a bowl, pretty much since I've been alive, um, 25 years on this earth, I remember that, you know, you play to win the game. And a bowl win is still something to celebrate. You know, Louisville is not a program that is expecting to make it to the playoff, is expecting to make it to the Orange Bowl. And this year, you can argue that even if Louisville would have beat Kentucky and then lost to Florida State, well, there's still a chance that Florida State gets left out of the playoff, and it's still a moot point because the Seminoles make the Orange Bowl regardless. Now, at that point, at 11-2, and two, is there an opportunity in which you make a New Year's Six Bowl? Yes, there is, and that is a different conversation. But at this point in time, I'm just trying to say that a Holiday Bowl, it's not the greatest. But it's still a bowl in which you can do what you can to salvage some momentum heading into the offseason. I mean, Louisville played in the Wasabi Fenway Bowl last year. They beat Cincinnati. People were celebrating, and it created a little bit of positive momentum, right? Um, Looking back at a couple different years, the Music City Bowl in 2015, the Music City Bowl in 2019, um, winning those bowl games getting you to a spot to where you end the season on a good note. At this point in time, it's all about momentum because in the grand scheme of things, the game doesn't truly matter. There's going to be players that, like for USC, you're already without Kayla Williams. So where's USC going to turn this game? Who's going to play quarterback for them? 
You know, is it going to be a player like Miller Moss, who was the backup to Caleb Williams this year? Well, that is to be determined, right? Um, some other players that will forego this matchup, opt out, and prepare for the NFL draft. It happens every year. USC could be a program that is a victim of that trend. So you beat a USC team, and it's like, well, how good of a win is it if you're beating a team that doesn't have um, Caleb Williams, who is probably at this point a lock to be a top three pick in the NFL draft? So I get it. I understand that it's not the most glamorous bowl game, but you still play to make a bowl game and win that game. I guess I'm a little bit old school thinking that a bowl game is still an accomplishment as there's some people that say, well, if you're not in the New Year's Six Bowl or the playoff, it doesn't matter. The bowl game means nothing. Sure, but at that point, like, what do you, what's the point of being bowl eligible then? You know what I'm saying? I, I For me, I guess my case is that it, it's a good opportunity to play a team that you normally wouldn't play and try to win the game and try to gain some momentum um, in the – Direct TV Holiday Bowl matchup. It was ranked as a top 20 matchup um, in bowl season, according to some college football analysts, which obviously would make sense. This is a very winnable game. Obviously, there's no Caleb Williams. But let's be honest, this USC defense, oh, man, really not all that good this year. Now, the Trojans were able to put up a ton of points this year. <clears throat> excuse me, granted they won't have their Heisman um, quarterback to do so, but it's still a decent offense led by one of the best offensive minds in college football, so I wouldn't write off the USC offense just yet. But the defense, man, uh, that is a defense that has gotten gashed more times than not, it feels like, this season. Alex Grinch, their DC, was fired. Um, at the end of the year, so we'll see. There might be some more fire to play for the interim. Still yet to be determined. But for me, I think a couple things. I, I think that from a fan base standpoint, it does suck that you're playing all the way across the country because it's cool that for the second straight year, you're playing at a baseball stadium. You're playing at Petco Park, which is the home of the San Diego Padres. It's a very unique stadium i love the backdrop to where there's the the hotel i think it's a hotel in the left field uh or beyond the left field i think that's very neat i'm interested to see how that's um how that's composed into a football field but it sucks because the orange bowl is in florida and it's a place where there's already a lot of Louisville fans in florida and it's a pretty easy decision to travel there and now you're like well now it's across country there's probably not going to be a lot of fans that travel. You're playing a USC team that, yeah, hasn't lived up to expectations, but there's likely going to be more Trojans fans there because it is legitimately almost in their backyard, USC being in the Pasadena area, which is fairly close to San Diego. And I think that the, maybe the only good thing about this matchup is the recruiting opportunities. Obviously, you try to – introduce your program more and more to California recruits, players from the West Coast. There hasn't been a California commitment since the Flyville 23 class where that St. John Bosco to the Bill movement happened. We'll see if that was a one-time thing or if maybe this sparks the uh, reemergence of that. We'll see that. Uh, we'll see how that's going to play out here uh, after this in a couple weeks, but Louisville has a couple weeks to prepare December 27th. It is on a weekday in which the Cardinals will play the Trojans. Um, I think it's an eight o'clock kickoff. So primetime matchup on Fox. So at least from a television standpoint, it, it's going to be a pretty accessible game, but I understand. Look, I'm not naive enough to know that it's, it's really, really tough to play in the Holiday Bowl when you felt like after you beat Miami that it was going to be like Orange Bowl or bust type thing, and then you lose the final two games, and it's like, well, damn. We're in the Holiday Bowl. I guess it could be worse. I don't buy the whole narrative that nobody wanted Louisville like some people just 
put out there, which I really do not buy whatsoever because the Holiday Bowl was the next in line. But enough about the matchup in its entirety. Let's start to look a little bit deeper into this matchup. The main question for me, the main storyline is who should play at quarterback? There's multiple different answers, and I think that that the main answer for me involves multiple different quarterbacks, and we'll talk about that here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time where you get your money back. Because with eBay, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to burn or it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Cardinal fans, thanks again for making this show Locked on Louisville your first listen of the day. Definitely appreciate it. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services five days a week. Your team every day. Another reminder, Locked on has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. The main storyline for me, as it relates to the Louisville Cardinals in the DirecTV Holiday Bowl against the USC Trojans on Wednesday, December 27th, is the quarterback position. And yeah, yeah, you'll say, well... I said in the first segment that winning and creating momentum are two keys for bowl games. But it's not the only thing. Two things can be mutually exclusive or two things can be true at one time. They're not mutually exclusive. Exclusive, I can't speak. First thing that is true, you can create momentum with a victory in the bowl game. Second thing that is true is that there's not a ton of effect on of this game on the grand scheme of things. And this acts as an opportunity to test what you have on the roster ahead of next season. And for the sake of this conversation on this show, we're talking about both viewpoints. We just talked about the first one that's winning and gaining momentum. Unfortunately, that's really all you can hang your hat on, but also there's an opportunity to go out and see what you have. And for a lot of fans, the quarterback position let me let me start with this. Jack Plummer wasn't perfect this year. I think we can agree with that. I think that you could have done a lot worse than Jack Plummer to finish 10 and 3 on the season, right? I think that he did what he was supposed to do and if you would have asked a lot of Louisville fans before the season if you would have took a 10 and 3 season with Jack Plummer as your starting quarterback getting to your first ever ACC championship game, you're probably taking it every day of the week twice on Sundays. But as appreciative as I am for Plummer for what he did this season and you're one of Jeff Brom. And I, I think at the end of the day, this game is all about the future because Plummer is no longer going to be a college football player after this game against USC. Now I understand it might not necessarily be a nice thing to suggest is that Plummer's final opportunity to play. He's not playing that much, but that's really sort of where you're at in college football is that, you have to see what you got. And at the quarterback position, I think that this is really an opportunity to kind of gauge where this position's at because we haven't really seen a lot of these guys outside of garbage time opportunities. Now, Brock Doman and Evan Connolly are gone. You have a couple players, Harrison Bailey, Brady Allen, and Pierce Clarkson. Those are the three that we're looking at in this game. And honestly, I would like to see all three of these guys play. Potentially, you do a situation where you can let Plummer play the game, have the four quarterbacks all play one quarter each. I think that that's fair. I think that it knocks out two birds with one stone, is that you 
tip your hat to Jack Plummer. You let him play in the bowl game that you know he helped lead you to, but you also give a nod toward the future and see what you have. You let Plummer start the game, um, get a couple of drives in, then hand it over to Pierce Clarkson, hand it over to Harrison Bailey and Brady Allen, and see what you've got there. Because Jamari Thrash is playing in the bowl, you would assume that Jawar Jordan, um, Isaac Garenda was well. I say that because there's not a ton of opt-outs, and at this point in time, there's not a ton of big-time transfers from this team as well. So you're going to have essentially starting personnel for this team for the bowl game. So I look at this as a key opportunity because a couple different things can happen. Number one, solid performances in the game. Now, granted, if you're playing one quarter each, it might be a little bit tough, but this is a great way to muster up some momentum because what happens if one of or multiple of Clarkson, Bailey, and Allen come into this game and they play well. Now, granted, you have to assume that there is a grain of salt to be taken because you're playing a USC defense that has not been good this season. Um, but they still come in against a Power 5 team in a bowl game, and they play well. If one, if at least one of those players plays well, I think it creates a very solid discussion heading into the offseason because as, as of right now, most people would – Assume that Texas Tech veteran quarterback transfer Tyler Shuck is probably going to be the starter in 2024. That's kind of why you go to the portal. But at this point in time, until proven otherwise, I am not writing off the possibility of an internal candidate being the quarterback one for the Cardinals. But I think that one way we can maybe get an idea if that's to be the case is to see them in action against USC. Because let's make no mistake about it, there is no Absolutely no drawback to playing any of the three quarterbacks on the roster that are behind Plummer in this game. There's none because, like we've said, there's not a, a huge effect of this game on the grand scheme of things outside of a losing skid and you know not gaining a little bit more momentum. But I'll argue that if – I think personally Louisville fans would rather see – Louisville lose this game closely, but see great stuff from the young quarterbacks than the Cardinals to win this game in a close fashion and have Plummer play the whole game. And that's no disrespect to Plummer. That's no disrespect to USC or any of the parties involved. It's more so eyes toward the future. 2015 Music City Bowl. One of the reasons why that game in particular created so much momentum is because Lamar Jackson put on an absolute show against a Texas A&M defense that was pretty solid. That is what you can possibly do this year. Uh, granted, there's it's a different situation, different scenarios, but I don't know. I think that that would help viewership. I think that that would uh, increase excitement. Now, granted, if all three quarterbacks come in and they don't play well, well, then – you you do risk of you do risk some of the concerns there, but wouldn't you want to see that though? Don't you want to see what you have in the quarterback room? For me, that's my stance. Like if you want to say that, hey, look, let Plummer play the majority of the game, and if it's close, keep him in. If it's a blowout, either which way, put the reserves in. I won't fault you for saying that if your take is to allow Plummer to play the majority of the game because he got you there, and this is his last college football game. I'm okay with that. I won't. Um, I will respect your opinion. I'll disagree with it a little bit um, to an extent. I do think that Plummer should play a little bit um, because, case in point, he did help this team lead us here, and he came to Louisville to do this. That that's where I'm at. But I do think that the younger guys need to get some time here for the Cardinals, at least a couple drives each for Clarkson, for Bailey, for Allen. Because at the end of the day, you're now gearing up toward 2024. If, if you're in the Orange Bowl, it's a whole different story. You're playing to win that game and put a statement out there. But you're not in the Orange Bowl. And that sucks to say. But now the storylines change. Because the Orange Bowl holds more weight. A New Year's Six Bowl holds more weight. You're in the direct TV holiday bowl now, and this is no disrespect to the holiday bowl, but not a lot of 
key emphasis on this game in the grand scheme of things. So I think personally, for me, let's see multiple quarterbacks in this game. Let's put football to the side for the moment. Some key basketball talk. Jeff Walls and the Louisville women's basketball team took down Kentucky for the seventh consecutive matchup. We'll talk about the Cardinals defeating the Wildcats on Sunday afternoon after we talk about our friends over at Prize Picks. If you didn't know, now you do. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Two key things for me. First one is the combo projections. You can go cross leagues. LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions. Nobody else is doing that. Number two, the reboot policy. What that means is that with prize picks, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return to the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury <coughs> insurance policy. I have done the, the combo stat projections, and the winnings have absolutely rolled in. Join the fun. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college using the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, Pricepicks.com slash locked on college while using the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. On Saturday, or I'm sorry, not on Saturday, on Sunday afternoon, the Louisville women's basketball team did something that they usually do every year, and that is take down their rivals, defeating the Kentucky Wildcats for Jeff Wallace. This is the seventh consecutive time that he was victorious. Over the Wildcats coming into this game, Kentucky at four and six, zero and two in conference play, not really playing all that well. But when you talk about rivalry contests, emotions are high. Teams, I feel like, play harder, they play better, and I expected Louisville to get Kentucky's best shot. I was wondering to see how Kentucky would react, and I was also equally interested to see how this new roster was going to treat this rivalry game, and. It was very clear that this team understood the rivalry. The crowd was incredible. They fed off of the crowd, and the mission was accomplished. 73-61 to 61 over Kentucky. Um, they outscored the Wildcats in all but one quarter, in which they were outscored by one in the second quarter. It was pretty close um, leading up until well, pretty much the whole game. Um, it was a single-digit game heading into the fourth quarter, and one thing that Louisville did in that game that they've done for the most part throughout the season outside of the game against Alabama is close in the final quarter. Louisville remains perfect at home, and their balance scoring was put on full display. Five players in double figures. Nyla Harris and Olivia Cochran led the front court 23 combined points, each with eight total or eight individual rebounds. Sydney Taylor uh, didn't have the greatest shooting day, but knocked down a couple of big time three pointers, 13 points. Uh, Kiki Jefferson had 11, seven, um, and also had um, you know, a pretty solid day from the free throw line, seven of eight. Uh, Nina Ricards didn't shoot all that well from the field, but had five rebounds to go with three assists. One thing that I discredited coming into the season was the potential role that Ilea Love could have for this team. The Georgia Tech transfer had a uh, team high 14 points for the Cardinals. She's averaging seven and three and a half to go with 51% shooting from the field. A uh, six foot one senior from Kansas City. Overall, I think that this game, number one, fantastic showing at home for a rivalry game. You win the rivalry game. It's extremely key. I think that this winning streak that the Cardinals are on show that this is definitely a team that could end up in the top four of the ACC right now. They haven't played a conference game, um, but I feel like this is a team that is going to be right up there. They've gotten some solid wins already this year. Now, granted, they lost to Alabama in the Betty Chancellor's Classic, over Thanksgiving break, it was a close loss against the Crimson Tide, and Alabama is is fairly solid. They're ten and two, um, but Louisville answered that with a victory over Gonzaga. They beat 
uh, Ole Miss on the road. They just beat Kentucky. And now they turn their attention after Moorhead State. No disrespect to the Eagles, but they do play UConn on the road in the XL Center. Uh, UConn has sort of struggled this season. They are 6-3 and three with losses to NC State, to Texas, and to UCLA. All three pretty solid teams. Um, but they just had a win over North Carolina. So for me, I think that that is going to be a very solid measuring stick as to where this team is because you've got some tough matchups to end this month. You've got UConn on the road. You host a Washington team that is a perfect 10-0. and And then your final game is at Miami, who's ranked 24th in the country. So overall, this team is doing what I felt like they would early on. You know, they had one game where they didn't play all that well or a couple games. Now, granted, they've only lost one of those games, but they're still handling business. The balanced approach has really, really uh, been key. You have multiple players, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six players averaging over eight points per game. I think that that is extremely key uh, for this team. Moving forward, you have a very, very efficient team from the field as well. Obviously, the MO of a Jeff Walls' team is defense and extreme effort, and this team definitely fits that MO uh, to a T. The identity is there for this team um, on both ends of the court. So overall, very solid showing at the KFC Yum Center on Sunday. Great crowd. Shout out to everyone that tuned in that made it out to that game. Um, Cardinals victorious over the Wildcats now turning their attention to Gino Ariema and Paige Beckers and the Yukon Huskies. So a very, very tough matchup that I think is going to be a key measuring stick for this team moving forward throughout the season as they head into conference play. Um, but that is going to wrap up today's episode of the show. Uh, we talked about um, the Holiday Bowl, what it represents for this program, who should play at quarterback, and the Louisville women's basketball victory over Kentucky. Um, as we continue to go through the week, we're going to talk about relevant transfer portal news as it comes to light. Obviously, portal news, very impromptu. It comes out of nowhere. Um, as I mentioned, keep watch over who is going to visit because that usually is a key indicator. Thor Griffith and Jonathan Mendoza both visited the Cardinals program before committing. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, to find the Locked On Mobile podcast on all streaming services, be sure to stay tuned to this graphic. The show is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. As always, thanks again for making Locked On Mobile your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, free on all streaming services, including YouTube, five days a week, your team, every day. Go Cards.